Outreach services for seniors is where it all starts. Many seniors tend to become very isolated as they age. So outreach support can bring a chance to socialize and get out of the house, and it can monitor seniors' health before they get into a crisis. I attended a luncheon organized by the Come Share Society, one of several outreach programs that were about to be cut by the government as a budget-saving measure. To many, these programs are essential for their quality of life. I have just heard that these little luncheons will no longer take place. That in, <clears throat> in itself is uh, quite sad as far as I'm concerned because it was such a thing that I looked forward to and I enjoyed these outings. I know it sounds silly, but if you are, are unable to drive and if you are dependent upon walking, you don't get very far when you walk. And everybody knows that if seniors are happy and have an interest, then they don't get into a depression. They don't have to go to the hospital. That in itself saves money. This is what worries me now because I look forward to this so much and it meant so much in my life. Uh, I don't know what to do to fill the gap. I can't very well just um, go to White Spot and sit down at a table and hope somebody will talk to me. So I'm missing a great deal when they've taken away these outings and these lunches. And who knows, I might become very sick. I might become very blue. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I, I don't even like to think about it, really. Marion got started me going to the um, Sunrise Seniors Hot Lunch with entertainment twice a, a month, and that makes a lot of difference because it, it's something that you when you set your alarm in the morning and it goes off and you think, why did I set that? Oh yes, it's Seniors Lunch. For me, who often skips lunch completely, the old... Uh, why bother to walk to the kitchen and get something <laughs> kicks in? It makes an awful lot of difference for Senior Support Service to be here because the, the good things that perk me up sometimes keep me going for two or three days at a time. I mean, even if I don't hear by email from any of the kids or the grandkids or the one son that lives in Delta is too busy to get in touch with me. Um, it's, it's very easy just to feel deserted and alone. And uh, it's going to be one of the worst things to swallow if this program does totally go down because Marion calls you up and makes sure you're going to attend. And when, when I first started going, I would sit out in a corner all by myself and she would drag me over to sit with somebody else and make sure that I had somebody that I could talk to. And, um, I'm going to miss that kind of thing. It's funny, some days when I'm really sitting there feeling blue, the phone will ring and it will be them. And all of a sudden, it's even if it's grey out, it's like the sky goes, the sky goes blue again. It just, it, just the little things that make all that difference. Lots of evidence that seniors can be really susceptible to depression when they're on their own and don't get out and don't have support from other people in the community, don't have friendship networks, there's no transportation available to them. What we know is that those people are less likely to get exercise, they're less likely to eat properly. We know that poor nutrition has very concrete impacts on health care. And if you put money into those upfront services, you're actually going to save money down the road, and there's lots of evidence to support that. The irony is, of course, that there has been research on how, with lack of support, 
uh, and with a decrease in socialization and strong relationships, people are more likely to end up in hospital. So in fact, the downstream costs are huge because we all know that ending up in hospital is very, very expensive to the system. If we were better at putting a cost on social relationships and how preventive care can save the system money, we would probably be a lot farther ahead.